Okay, now we will discuss variation of stresses with inclination. What do we mean by variation of stresses with inclination? Now, generally we have stresses applied on structure. Okay, so we have got in general, generally we have got loads applied on the structure and stresses are developed inside the structure. Okay, so it's a phenomena which is internal. Stresses are internal. The applied loads, they are external. Uh, so this stress, the stresses which are developed inside structure, they can have any direction. Okay, so let me give you an example. Imagine I have got this frame structure. It's an L-shaped frame structure. I apply load. Okay, so this load is causing tension at the top, compression at the bottom. And as a result of this tension and compression, there are stresses getting developed inside this structure. So what we do for our convenience is that we divide this whole structure into small rectangular boxes. Okay, since stress is uh, everywhere, okay, within the structure, stress is developed everywhere. So for our convenience, we assume that this whole structure is divided into small boxes. Each box is of the same size. Okay, so you can have a box, any box you can pick up over here, so you can see this structure is all divided into these boxes. This box, the box looks something like this. We pick up one box from here and I have drawn the stresses of it. Now, from our MOS 1, we know that if the load is applied axially, that will produce axial stresses. If the load is parallel, to the cross section, then that will cause shear. So in this box, you can see that we have got an axially applied load at every phase. We have got stresses at every phase. So we have axially applied load, which we call stress excess, and we have shear stresses, which are parallel. Okay, so we have shear in two directions for every phase. We come up, we introduce a, or we coin a, uh, a convention. We say that so uh, we want to name the stresses, okay? Because there are lots of stresses. So what should we call? Should we call it stress one, stress two, stress three? Should we call it stress? I mean, like you can give any convention to it, but the important thing over here is that this convention, convention which we are trying to develop, that should tell you which direction the shear, the stress is and at what phase it is. These are the two important information which the convention should tell us. Okay? So what we say, we introduce subscripts, two subscripts. One subscript tell us the direction of the stress, remembering that stress is force by area and force is actually the force whose, uh, which is directed in, um, uh, which is in the direction of particular axis, okay? So consequently the stress is also in the direction of particular axis. So two, we introduce two subscripts. The first one is telling us the direction of the, uh, of the stress. The second one is telling us the outward drawn normal of the phase. So you see, the outward drawn normal of the phase, this is x, and the, uh, the stress is in the direction of y. We call it shear because this is parallel to the phase. And similarly, we can have for the other phases. Okay, so in this box, we have Stresses for how many stresses? Three per phase. So six threes are eighteen. Eighteen stresses. Six phases and three stresses. Eighteen different stresses. But because of equilibrium, because of equilibrium, you get 
um, you get three, six, and nine. Nine distinct stresses. The other stresses, they are equal to it. So like for example, summation of fx, this every box, every box in this structure must be in equilibrium. Okay, equilibrium means that summation of all the forces and the moments must be equal to zero. So if we pick this up, we assume that this box is in equilibrium and summation of fx, for example, must be equal to zero. So stress xx in this direction must be equal to stress xx in that direction. Okay, so therefore they both are equal. So that stress xx that's not distinct. If we know these, this stress xx, we automatically put all the stress xx on the other place. Similarly, the moments must be equal to zero. So, the if this imagine tau zx, okay, this tau zx, and there would be another tau zx which is in the opposite direction of tau xz. That is causing a moment, and that moment is resisted by this phase, which is the normal z phases. The, no, the stresses which are on normal z phases, they will be causing. So, this times this lever arm must be equal to this tau xz times this lever. Okay, so these two couples must be equal, and this we discussed in our previous classes that how your horizontal shear is equal to the vertical shear. Horizontal and vertical shears they are equal based on the equilibrium uh, of the moments. Okay, summation of moments. So this one, so ta zx must be equal to ta xz. That is from the moment, <coughs> and similarly for the, all the other stresses. So, so now we have established that there are forces in the structure. These forces give rise to stresses. Those stresses can be uh, conveniently uh, shown in on, uh, in the form of a box. Okay, these stresses. They must be in equilibrium, which means like summation of all the forces must be equal to zero, summation of all the uh, moments must be equal to zero. So that is something which we have established. Now what do we mean by variation of stresses with inclination? With inclination means that if I take, if I take any plane if I cut this box in any plane, I will still have another type of stress. Or in other words, what I am saying is, imagine I have a box like this, okay, and it is subject to stress. So this is just one box. I've just drawn it in 2D and it is subject to stresses. Okay, so these are all stresses. Imagine this is stress 1 and this is stress 2. Okay, it's the same box. Now, if I take an axis like this, and so there will be at every phase, there is an x zero and there is a shear. Okay, so I can cut it in any direction this box, and I will again get another x zero and another shear stress. Okay, so in other words, I can cut this box in infinite planes. And I will again at every plane get normal stress and shear stress. Okay? So out of all these stresses which we have, we have got stress on the box and on every face we have stresses. And then we can cut this box at various inclination and we can have stresses at those, in those faces also. 
So out of all these stresses, which stress is maximum? That we don't know. So in this topic, we will try to find out that axial stress and shear stress which is maximum. So I can give you another example that imagine you have got a body, okay, and this body, this can be any random body, which is this body, and this is subject to lots of loads, which is shown over here. So I say that if I cut it like this, I will get an axial stress and shear stress. And similarly, I can cut it like this. I can cut it in this direction. I can cut it in this direction. So I can cut it in infinite planes. And I will get different stresses. So what, which stress is maximum? That is what I am after. Why? Because if I have to design this structure, if I have to design this structure, I am interested in that stress which is maximum. If the load which I am applying and that stress, the stress which I am getting, the maximum stress, if I don't know that, it's possible that my load exceeds the limit, the capacity of this structure. Okay? So I am interested in the maximum stress. And that maximum stress, I don't know where it is applied, at what inclination it is. So although I have for my simplification made a box out, may uh, uh, divide it into different, divided the structure into different boxes, and at every box I have put, I have assigned some stresses, axial and shear stresses to that, but I don't know whether these stresses which I have assigned, they are maximum or not. There can be, I can cut this box now in different inclination and I will keep on getting different stresses. So, in this topic what we are going to do is, we will study how to find out the maximum stress within a cross section or within an element. You will be given an element like this and you will be found, you will be asked to find out the maximum stress. Okay? Maximum axial stress and maximum shear stress. So it's a very straightforward topic. So in other words, in other words, if I know these two stresses, okay? And how can I know these two stresses? I can find it out in the lab. Okay, if I test a beam, if I if I put a beam, I apply some load on that beam. Okay, I can imagine I put two threads over here. One is in this direction. I put two threads, one in this direction and one body. Just two threads, okay? So this is a beam, a beam, it can be say a concrete beam. I take a concrete beam, cast a concrete beam, place it on two supports in the lab. Then I imagine I place two nails over here. I hammer two nails, four nails, okay, four nails I hammer and join uh, and put, tie two nails, every two nails with a thread, okay, that's what I do and imagine that I have got a device, okay, uh, forget about the device, this is, that's what I have done, yeah, I mean simple, very simple layman like in layman language, I have placed two threads which are perpendicular to each other. Okay? Now, once I apply the load, what will happen? The thread will extend or it will shrink. Or imagine this is not a thread, it is a, a small wire, a steel wire or something. 
but it will extend or it will shrink. So I can find out how much has it extended or it has shrunk. Yeah? So from that, I can find out the strain of these threads. I would know the material of this. Okay, E would already be known to me. So stress is equal to E times strain. I would know the strain in this direction and in that direction. In two directions, I have known the strain. Now my point is now how to find out the maximum stresses. Okay, these are the two strains which I have got from the lab. Now I need to find out how to find, how to get the maximum stress at a particular cross section. How can I do that? Very straightforward. This is one stress, this is another. I take component of this along this one. Yeah, <coughs> summation of fx is equal to zero. Summation of all the forces about this plane, normal. And summation of all the forces about this plane, parallel. I do that and I find out this shear stress and this normal stress in terms of these two, which I have already found in the lab. You understand my point? So from that, I will find, I will get the maximum stress at a particular orientation. And that's what we will do. Any question about the concept? Is it okay? So in the next class, we will try to derive this equation. And then from this equation, we will be uh, getting uh, stresses at different inclinations. Okay? okay that's it.